Well, hello. It is, I guess, uh, part number one of my reading vlog. Of my first ever reading vlog. Apologies if you hear a weird noise. It is this thing. We've got this fan. This... <laughs> so we're in the middle of a heat wave here in the UK. It is uh, Sunday the 1st of July. And... Um, Actually, that is a really good place to start a reading vlog, isn't it? I'm um, basically, there's going to be like about a week in this one because next Saturday, Saturday the 7th of July, is Words on the Pageathon, and that's arranged by Angela Hart, uh, uh, Books of My Heart. And the idea is it's like a, a day, a 24 hour write a thon where you write as much as possible. I'll, uh, I'll link below actually because I've kept vlogs for these in the past, but um, I'm probably going to do another vlog during the next words on the page a thon you know so it seemed like I might as well do my reading vlog up to the Friday before it and then do words on the page a thon and then continue because that'll be a vlog in its own so we have Biggie he is on the floor down there he is asleep I'm currently reading Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare now this is part of a buddy read with Damien Tariquez Lisa's West Coast Reads, Kit Kats Can Read, and Sophisticated Books. So we're all trying to basically get through all these. I guess I, I kind of claim I'm reading these ironically, but I mean, I do sort of enjoy the mortal instruments. Anyway, this is the Infernal Devices. It's not very good. I didn't like the first one, Clockwork Angel, and this one is not much better. I'm, I will be honest, I'm skim reading it. Part of the problem with it is that... Um, I mean, I thought it's supposed to be urban fantasy or whatever. It's just this is a romance book. There's no plot to it other than this romance. There's a love triangle going on. We all know how much I enjoy love triangles. There's some casual, like, racism. So, for example, somebody made a joke about Irish people and potatoes. And I don't know if you, whoever you are who's viewing this, know the, the idea behind that. But basically it relates back to the Irish potato famine when a lot of people died. It's really inappropriate to make jokes about that. And another one was that jokes about Yorkshiremen as well, people from Yorkshire. And I'm just like, oh, why does... I don't know, it just wasn't cool, man. Especially for an American writing it, you know what I mean? That's when it's even weirder. It's like if I start taking the piss out of rednecks or something, which admittedly does sound like something I would do. But anyway, that's about it really. I'm actually doing some work. I know it's a Sunday, but I am a freelancer, so I always have work to do. But I'm hoping, basically Becca's at work this morning, and I figure if I get some work done now, I'll be able to take a bit more time off, if that makes sense. Bloody lovely day outside. But uh, yeah, also I'm about to do some filming as well. I mean, I've talked for like three minutes. That's not what these reading vlogs are meant to be. I'm just, I want to do like a minute or two, maybe once or twice a day, you know. So, so I'm going to go and crack on. I don't think I'm going to finish this book today anyway. I think I'm going to finish it tomorrow. Oh yes, and I haven't slept. That's another thing. It's currently uh, 10 to 11 in the morning. Yesterday I went to bed at like 9 a.m. and woke up at like... 6 p.m. or something uh, So that was pretty bad. So now I'm just trying to stay up until this evening and go back to sleep and wake up at a normal time tomorrow So I will let you know but uh, yeah Beards coming along as well. Very nice Hey Becca Say hello to the people. Hi. Hello. They probably can't hear because we're watching Scary Movie 5. I am making, or attempting to make this, sweet and sour crispy tofu. Each and every single one of you who have taken this journey down memory lane with me as I consumed all those expired cereals, but right now... Yeah, so that was the LA Beast. I was just watching him. Uh, he ate he ate cereal from 1986, which is means the cereal was older than I am. Anyway, it is um, it's nearly 11 p.m. on a Monday, the second, something like that. Um, so yesterday I, I went to bed at a reasonable time at 10 p.m. and then I woke up today at 4 p.m. because the night before I didn't sleep. So it's all going a bit crazy. My sleep's a bit messed up, but I have pretty much finished the clockwork prints. No, the just clockwork prints. Yeah, I, I didn't like this book, but I wasn't expecting to. So it was as bad. No, it was probably worse than Clockwork Angel, which was the first one. So 
basically in this it's all about a love triangle that's the entire plot of the book and very little happened and then I started skimming as well which made it even worse because then I literally just didn't know what was happening one of the main characters got engaged I just oh I don't know I don't care to be honest but uh yeah I've got like literally two pages to go and then we have some acknowledgements and then like what is this exclusive to this collector's edition the letter Will Herondale writes in Clockwork Angel and the short story Burning Bright. I can't stand Will Herondale, by the way. He is, he is terrible. He's like my least favourite character I've ever read. And we've now got this big... We've got to this bit where there's this big, like, spoiler about why he's such a jerk. And I don't know. It doesn't make... It doesn't make it okay. So, I don't know. Anyway... In other news, I've got a few books that I want to get rid of, so I might film an unhaul for those. We shall see. I'm really, really quickly going to finish reading this, which is New York City in 1979. By the way, before we get there, Clockwork Prince. Uh, this is... Uh, I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5, and that's being generous. That's only because I don't want to give it a 2 when I've given other books a 2. That I, I would rather read that than The Shadow of the Wind, for example, but I didn't like either of those books. This one I have been enjoying so far. It's Kathy Acker, New York City in 1979. So she was a photographer, so this is another one of my Penguin Mini Moderns. But this one has, like, some photographs and stuff in as well, look. And then I'm going to read Dark Places by Gillian Flynn, which is part of a buddy read. And then after that, I'm going to read Interview with a Vampire, which is almost also part of a buddy read. And then after that, we'll see. I haven't planned out any further than that. All right. Anyway, on that note, I am going to I'm going to go and watch some more L.A.B. So let's see what he's up to. In order for me to blast myself back into my childhood, I'm going to sit here and chug this entire mixture of all of my favorite 90s cereals together. I got this. I got this all day. Mmm. Oh. Hey, Biggie. Who are you up to? Oh. We're watching uh, Earth and Ged, aren't we? Aren't we, Biggie? I'm watching Earthling Ed, so he's not a booktuber. He is a vegan tuber, I guess. I guess that's what you'd call it. He kind of, uh, he uploads videos of his activism and stuff. Mostly just him talking to people on the street. And, um, I don't know, I, li I like it because he's always very polite to people as well. But he also makes some very good points. So I've been learning things. This is him talking about why you shouldn't ride the New York horse carriages. So I finished reading New York City in 1979 by Kathy Acker. Uh, it was pretty cool. I think I mentioned it already in this vlog, but it has these photographs in as well. So these weren't actually taken by her. I found that out afterwards. I actually looked it up online and uh, a lot of people did not rate this highly. I think its average rating on Goodreads is below three stars, which I don't know if I've ever even seen before. But um, I don't know, people, like a lot of people rated it two stars and some people are saying like, oh, uh, you know, it's just written to shock and it, maybe it was shocking back in the day, but isn't shocking now. But actually, I just thought it was pretty good. Let me read you, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna read you part of this story. My arm's getting tired from, because I'm holding the camera up rather than straight. Let me switch hands. I don't want there to be too much footage, just like close, extreme close-ups of my face. Okay, this is intense sexual desire is the greatest thing in the world. Janie dreams of cocks. Janie sees cocks instead of objects. Janie has to fuck. This is the way sex drives Janie crazy. Before Janie fucks, she keeps her wants in cells. As soon as Janie's fucking, she wants to be adored as much as possible at the same time as, its other extreme, ignored as much as possible. More than this, Janie can no longer perceive herself wanting. Janie is want. It's worse than this. If Janie gets sexually rejected, her body becomes sick. If she doesn't get who she wants, she naturally revolts. This is the nature of reality. No rationality possible. Only this is true. And then it goes over the page, but it's hard to change pages while I'm holding the camera. But yeah, I mean, I thought it was all right. I think I gave it a four out of five, maybe. Um, I actually like this one 
especially after reading, because this is number 27 in this series, and I like it in comparison to the others, because it does change things up a bit, because it does have these, like, images in, and, you know, little slightly different formatting and stuff. So it kept it fresh, you know. But anyway, I've finished reading that, and I've now picked up Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. So this is my last Gillian Flynn book to read. I've read all of her others. I, I have kind of controversial opinions, I guess, because I didn't like Gone Girl, and I didn't really like Sharp Objects. I did like The Grown Up, I gave that 4.5, and so far I am enjoying this. I know, I think Mindy isn't enjoying it, because this is a buddy read with a bunch of people. Oh, I think, no, I think Mindy just said she didn't like the main character, but actually, I never like Gillian Flynn's main characters, and I think so far at least Libby Day in this one is the most likeable one. I do have a feeling I know the twist. So basically it's about, like, her brother killed her family, when she was younger, now her brother's in jail, and she goes to this like weird meeting of all these people who are like obsessed with the crime, and they all want to speak to her. And basically, I think it's going to turn out that she killed her family and not her brother. That is what I think the twist is going to be. Oh, Becca's on a day off as well, so she might be in the vlog a little bit. And we were talking about maybe going to the farm shop to get some nice, like, fresh fruit and vegetables and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, and I've been eating these. These are like. They're like vegan Smarties, basically, because a lot of Smarties, I don't know if they still do, but Smarties, at least used to, use uh, food colouring that's made out of crushed insects. Yeah, like, I don't think people realise what they're eating and how gross it is. Like, even like milk, like in America in particular, like people are taught, oh yeah, drink milk, it's healthy, and it's like, it has pus and blood in it and is mixed from like the milk of like 40 different cows and uh, no. Becca, what are we up to? We're going shopping. We're going shopping. We're going to the farm shop to get fruit and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and veg. Yeah. Let's go. And I am reading this in the car because yay. Yeah. We need mushrooms, onions and tomatoes, don't we remember? So we need some of those and some of those as well. Uh, and then I guess either vine tomatoes or just these tomatoes, the loose ones. Get the loose ones. Uh, yeah, that'll do us, won't it? I guess we'll use those for now instead of getting some cherries, unless you want to get some cherry tomatoes as well. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as we eat pot food, if I make it five. We'll get through them. We did well, we think we did well. We'll show you when we get home, because we got a box. We got a literal box, did yeah. we? Yeah. A box of veg. All right, let's go. I think I can't actually close the uh, boot. Yeah, I'll do, do it. Hmm? I can smell the tomato bread. Yeah, what in there? Yeah. Go on, let's see. <laughs> is basically like a vegan supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, it's heavy! Hello Biggie! Biggie, look what we got! Look at this! <laughs> what do you make of that? Hi Biggs! Oh. Oh. He's come right up to the camera there. So he has, yes he has. What do you make of it all, Biggie? Oh, uh, I love you, Kale. Yes, why are you eating the kale? Don't eat the kale, that's for us to do. You ready to order? Yeah. I'm hungry. Me too. We don't want that. Mmm. Are you aware that I'm not taking a photo? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, are you excited about your food? Yeah. Hey Biggie. Oh, you alright? Yeah. 
Mmm. Okay, well, we've got a biggie there. This here is the television. So I've been watching this documentary about Vietnam. It's Ken Burns. Ken Burns' documentary on Vietnam. It's like a 10 part uh, series and it's like an, it's a movie. Look, you can see it's like an hour and 39 minutes long. Get off my pen. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, okay, no, fine. You have the pen, Biggie. You have the pen, it's fine. So yeah, it's like a 10 part hour and 40 minute long per episode series on Vietnam. Ken Burns has also done this thing. He did one on the war, the Second World War as well. And there's also one of the American Civil War, which I haven't watched because it's not really super relevant to me, to be honest. Oh. It is uh, 20 past eight in the morning. And I have the curtains closed because basically, I don't know if you can see the light shining in there, but where the angle of the TV is, let me turn around so you can see me. Sorry, where the angle of the window is, basically the light comes right in and it means I can't see my monitors. So I have to have the curtains closed till about half 10. He's off, he's, he's just gone for a runner. Uh, we went to Wagamama's for dinner yesterday, which is a, like a chain of restaurants here in the UK and they have a dedicated vegan and vegetarian menu, which is very exciting. And uh, yeah, as for my book, because I know that's what you're all here and wanting to know about. I'm on page, page 158 so far. So I've done a pretty good dent. I'm actually, I am enjoying this. I would rank this as my uh, second favorite Gillian Flynn book so far. I do still think that Libby Day, the main character, it's gonna turn out that she was the one who killed her parents. But um, mainly as well because there hasn't been any clues in that direction and it just seems like an obvious twist to go for for me. So I guess I'll update you when I get to the end. But um, yeah, it's pretty good so far, I'm enjoying it. I'm, her writing style is growing on me. The more I read her books, the more I like them. So when her next one comes out, I will definitely read it. No matter how I, how I end up feeling about this one. I've been writing poems in my little notebook. Hello. Why don't you come and sit up here with me? He's a bit confused because he's just had his breakfast and then he did a poo and every time he does a poo he goes a bit mental. He's cleaning himself now. Yes, that's where I am with that. In terms of my writing, I have just written a poem. I do a poem and a piece of flash fiction every day in my notebook, so I've done that. I have also been writing my memoirs. Uh, which is like uh, my life in books, which I'll probably share some with you at some point. Basically, I just talk about some of the different books I've read and what they meant to me and that kind of thing. And uh, I've also been editing Jailed, which is uh, book number three in the Lightfold series. It's a collection of short stories facing my private detective character. And um, sorry, I'm just moving this around just to give you a bit more of a sense of our house I guess I don't know guys let me know let me just check on my focus let me know if there's anything in particular you want to see in these videos as well and I will see what I can do with that in the meantime it is now time to get started with my day of work I'm mostly going to be writing about somebody called Lisa Sasevich so I have a client who is a she's a best-selling author in Aus in Australia she writes non-fiction and basically I'm helping her to write like the bare bones chapters of this book that she's working on so um, it's about a load of different thought leaders so I'm kind of doing the first draft of each chapter on each of these thought leaders so that she can then take that and build upon it and you know make it her own and stuff so really it's more I'm doing like their their bios and finding some good quotes and stuff but it's a lot of fun I will mostly be doing that today so I guess I will go and crack on with that I'm gonna do some filming later as well I've got an unhaul to do and I don't know if you can see back there there we go hang on there we go <laughs> those books back there that's the next part of my bookshelf tour so I gotta do that so I can put the books away. In every fucking mouth, if it's not the office, it's another show Jake can see easy rant. Your lyric book is basically the TV guide. <laughs> Kill the cunt in front of you. In battle rap, that's the meaning. No one wants to hear about Gareth Keenan's plans this evening. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so this morning, because it is 10.20 a.m., I am watching, this is one versus Soul Jitsu. It's a don't flop battle rap. Rap battle. I don't know why I said it like that. This makes me like seem as though I, don't, I do watch quite a lot of battle rap because words. For some reason, there's some gravy on the sofa. I think Becca left this here. Let's put that back up. Where where am I? I am on. Uh, okay, so for dark places, I've hit page 280. 
So, what we have, the problem that I've had with Gillian Flynn before, and which I'm continuing to have in this book, is that, like, Flynn, she always seems to start strong, and then there's a bit in the middle where I'm just, I get so over it, you know, and I just want it to finish. So, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I don't know, I don't have too much left to read, so I'm looking forward to just sort of seeing now whether my prediction turns out to be true, and whether it does turn out to be that, uh, that, that, that she did it, that Libby Day did it. Also, the blurb, right? So let me read you this blurb. It says, uh, she begins to realize that everyone in her family had something to hide that day, especially Ben. Now, 24 years later, the truth is going to be even harder to find. Who did massacre the Day family? But the way that's written, every time I look at it and see it, I think it just means like, who did massacre the Day family? Who did massacre them? Does anyone know who did massacre them? And I'm like, that's not, that, that's not proper English. But no, I am, I am like enjoying this really. Especially in comparison to her other books. Like, I think the thing with Gillian Flynn, there's something about her writing. For a start, partly she reminds me of Stephen King sometimes in the way she writes. Not, she's not as good as Stephen King, but then she's also not as had much practice, not had as much practice as him yet. So, you know, she's got plenty more books in her, I imagine. I, I kind of have to read her work just to see what she comes up with because at some point she's gonna totally blow me away. I just don't know what it is. It might still be in this one. It might be that the ending of this one will just blow my mind. So we will see. But um, yeah, it's 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 out so far. And then when I finish this, I'm going to pick up Interview with a Vampire. I was watching um, I was watching Roy Eve Reads the other day, and it was her uh, TBR for July. I will link to this stuff and the Don't Flop Battle. I'm linking to everything that I mention wherever possible uh, in the description below. But anyway, she was doing a TBR and she was talking about some books that she wanted to read in July and I happen to have them both so I'm thinking about sort of jumping on that band ranking because these are both on my TBR as well I've not read either of them and they're two Shakespeare plays so I have Othello here and the cool thing about this one is that somebody has obviously used this for school or something so they've there are notes all over it and literally all throughout the play as well so I know to some people that'd be super annoying, but for me, I don't know, I, I kind of, I'll probably read her notes as well and try and or maybe even see if I can figure out who it was that actually owned this book, you know. But um, also, obviously, if she studied this, then I imagine the notes that she's written beside the text are actually quite insightful. And then the other copy I have also has some writing in it. This is Bell's Grammar School, Colford. And I can't even read the writing on it, but I think it says it says the 12th of September, maybe 1940. So yeah, it's this really old edition of A Midsummer's Night's Dream. And uh, I just figured again, because Roy is reading them, I thought I might read them too. So I might do that, we'll see. How good was dinner? Really, really yummy. There we go. You probably just saw part of it and then my camera battery died, but there are remnants of it. So you can see. We did like, uh, what did I call it? Like buffalo, buffalo cauliflower with like, buffalo cauliflower wings with piri piri potato and some sweet corn. And we also had some uh, asparagus. And now Becca has to do the washing up. To go and sign on your fat old plate. <laughs> now you drive a forklift. I'm sure you get a better job soon. Try not to act so stressed, but I guess it's hard to keep your chin up when you have no neck. <laughs> All right, it is uh, Friday, and I finished. I finished reading Dark Places. So my potential prediction was nowhere near the uh, the ending. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it. Let me just lean back so I can get comfortable. But um, I don't know. The ending was kind of disappointing because one of the people who uh, was like the perpetrator of the crime or whatever, I'm sure they hadn't even been mentioned. So it felt a bit deus ex machina to me. So I don't know. It let itself down a bit with the ending, I think. I'm still giving it a 3.75. It's probably my favourite of her novels. But uh, The Grown Up for me is her best book by far. And then her, 
I, I don't know whether it's just because in her novels there's always this bit about halfway through where it just really slows down and I kind of lose interest a little bit. But yeah, it was it was all right. I am glad that I've now finished reading all of Gillian Flynn's books. I've now moved on to Interview with the Vampire. What's weird is that, like, the way that it's set up so far is reminding me of Rant by Chuck Palahniuk. Is that how you say his name? Somebody correct me if you want to. Um, because in Rant, it's like an oral history of Rant, so it's people talking about Rant as opposed to us actually seeing and meeting Rant, if that makes sense. And that seems to be what's kind of going on when they're talking about Lestat, so... Uh, I don't know though, I'm not very far in. It's alright so far. I'm not massively enjoying it, but I'm not hating it. I, I'm sure I will manage to finish it. It's, to be honest, at the moment it's about on par with Dark Places in terms of how much I've been, I'm enjoying it. I kind of just want to finish it. It, it like quickly because I, I mean it's a long old book it'll take me a while a couple days probably won't finish reading it in this reading vlog but um i just want to finish it and move on to something else so yeah i'm currently watching uh rap battles so uh don't flop they're the they well they were the uk's biggest rap battle league then they kind of collapsed but i think they're coming back like they're doing their first event for 10 months or something so that's cool but this is from like 2015 Luna C versus o'shea I know Shea is probably my favourite battle rapper because he's just this this Liverpudlian dude who's very funny and very inappropriate. So yeah, I also think I'm getting an ear infection in this ear. I had one like two months ago. I, I always get them. I've always been prone to them for some reason. I don't know why and it's just not fun. It's uh, currently 5 to 10 in the morning. I've got some freelance work to do. I reckon I have about an hour and a half, two hours left of freelance work to do because I've been working really hard and I'm like kind of ahead of schedule. So um, like last weekend I worked Saturday and Sunday pretty much. So I'm hoping to finish by the early afternoon today and then basically take it easy. I might even play guitar and write a song which would be fun. Obviously get a bit of reading done, might do a bit of cooking, might do a bit, a bit of a jog later as well. So I will keep you updated on that. But in terms of my, like, my writing, so my work writing, I'm currently writing a series of blog posts for, uh, it's for the person I mentioned earlier who's a best-selling author, uh, Australian author. And so I'm writing a series of how to be a celebrity expert for her now. So before I think I mentioned I was writing like the first draft for a chapter to go in one of her books and doing all the research and whatnot for that and now I'm actually doing it the other way around so I'm taking a book that she's already written and released and I'm kind of writing blog posts based on each of the chapters in that book so that she can you know push those out there and encourage people to go in and buy it so that's pretty cool and in terms of my own writing I've been working on my memoirs some more I actually don't know what the current word count of that is because basically this is the project, I don't really have a name for it at the moment, but it's going to be about my life in books, and so it's going to talk about all the different books I've read and relate that back to, you know, events in my life and whatnot. But at the same time, obviously, I do want to cover events that don't necessarily have a book to directly tie in with it. So one of the things I've been doing recently is revisiting all of my old, like, I take a little journal with me when I go on holiday and just make notes about it and stuff. So I've been going through some of my old, like, Glastonbury Festival notebooks, and there's one from when I went to Amsterdam, for example. And I've just been literally copying and pasting my notebook from the time into the manuscript at the point in my life at which it happened so that then as I go back through and I'm actually writing the memoirs I can you know look at the journals I kept at the time as well so I also have the diaries that I've been kept kept like keeping since since 2010 I think no it must be before that 2007 I think 2006 2007 so I have like over 10 years of diaries to go through two which is going to take ages because that's like 500,000 words but I'm kind of looking forward to it as well it might give me some cool stuff to mention but uh yeah because of all that like I am writing the manuscript I'm just uh yeah I mean I'll show you here all of these here that aren't highlighted that means they're like writ written and they're also linked up to this uh bit at the end as well which I'll show you in a second these yellow bits that means that I need to add like the references and then all of this blue is notes that I've got that then need you know sorting through basically and this green is for something else entirely so don't worry about that so this is my book index and so you can see it's kind of all linked up to the different pages look 
So uh, yeah, that's where these books appear, and it's authors, series, and uh, book titles as well. So um, yeah. I've been talking a lot longer than I meant to, so I am going to uh, stop for now. This might actually be the end of this vlog. I think it probably is going to be the end of this vlog because the, the footage so far is pretty long as well. So um, I don't want these vlogs to be super long. I don't want people to get bored or anything like that. So I guess we'll cut that off for here. And then as of the, the next bit you will see will be as part of my next reading vlog. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books I've been reading, I guess. Let me know your thoughts on all of the random stuff that I've talked about. <laughs> Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know actually if you want me to do more reading vlogs because I will if there's a demand there, you know. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.